Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Caboose bringing you another Gotham Knights video. We are back. I apologize for the little hiatus that I went on there. I got COVID, okay? Uh, there is a lot that's been going on the last couple of days, and I wasn't feeling very well. And unfortunately, it's because I finally caught COVID after two and a half years of avoiding it. But I'm here. I hustled through it. I'm feeling a little better. And I wanted to record for you guys my review for Gotham Knights. Knights. That's right. I had my hands on the game. Thanks to WB Game for providing me an early copy of the game on both PS5 and PC. I have so much to talk about today. But before we do so, if you're looking forward to Gotham Knights, if you're looking forward to hearing my thoughts on this game, well then scroll down right now, hit that thumbs up button, share your love with me, and let's get this video to 2,500 likes for the Gotham Knights hype. Again, I apologize if I sound super weird throughout the entirety of this video. I'm really trying to battle through this. I'm looking for pockets where I'm feeling okay to just record, so I'm going as fast as I can. To add a bit of extra housekeeping here, I don't want to tread too much old ground, as there was a lot that I covered in my early hands-on impressions with Gotham Knights, some of which I still share the same opinion. And let's be honest, Gotham Knights has had a tumultuous road to release, to say the least. From the moment it was announced, the game and subsequently its developers were fighting an uphill battle to try and convince people that this was a calculated risk in not making it a continuation of anything Arkham and trying to be a complete departure from that franchise. Add on the cancellation of the last gen ports and recently announced 30 FPS cap on the PS5 slash Xbox series consoles and suffice to say there's been a lot of controversy. Of course with that I've also taken some heat for being an avid supporter. But you know what let me try and back up some of the things that I genuinely love love about the game. I truly think that this open world is very well crafted. Each borough feels distinct from one another, not just in its atmosphere and design, but also in the gangs that patrol the area. And I'm doubling down on it not being an even remotely dead city. Again, as I've mentioned before, the streets aren't filled to the brim with cars, nor the sidewalks with civilians but there are plenty of Gothamites to encounter in your journey across the city, several of which will comment on the character that you're playing as at the time. There's also a decent amount of activities to find, some of which are genuinely fun, like the Bat Psycho Racing, and others that are a little tedious and uninspired. I don't know, some of the side activities didn't really do it for me, and then also unlocking the fast travel was extremely tedious. There's also crime to stop in the streets of Gotham as well. There are active crimes that you're gonna run into often, and they're almost always just beat up a couple of enemies. Then there are the premeditated crimes, which are a bit meatier in content, but still tend to feel a bit samey. As you progress through the game and learn more about different enemy factions, it'll open up a bit of variety in both the kinds of crimes and enemy types. But I don't know, I was still hoping for more of a difference in the crimes that you encounter. I also enjoy the combat quite a bit. I will say that the difficulty really increases the more that you level up, as your enemies will level up with you, which in some ways is a good thing, but also can be a bit of a bad thing. It can make certain bits of combat feel frustrating as you're forced to dodge a lot, which slows down the pace of the game exponentially. This is once again me pleading for a counter button that isn't tied to the special abilities that the characters have. That said though, the perfect dodging does feel really nice, and in order to really explore the full potential of Gotham Knights combat, you need to learn the time strikes. This is where you're going to see some different animations, and you're actually going to be able to perform some combos. The Knights all bring something unique to the table, and I've spoken about this in greater length in my hands-on impressions video, but I'll reiterate a few things that I like and don't like about all the characters. First up, Batgirl. She has the most fun traversal in the game with the classic Arkham Glide. It's not quite the same feeling from the Arkham games, but it still feels smooth, and she also has some really fun abilities and solid combat. Once you start figuring out her combos, learning how to string together the light and heavy attacks, utilizing the batarangs, everything gels really well here. Nightwing is also surprisingly fun with very satisfying combos. I don't hate the glider as much as some people do. That's just my personal opinion. I actually found a way to have quite a bit of fun with it. But honestly, one of the best things about about Nightwing is that the way that WB Montreal incorporated his acrobatic style into just about everything he does. It's such a nice touch. I actually love gliding around for a bit, then dropping down to the ground, calling in the bat cycle, and seeing Nightwing flip into his seat as I rip a wheelie down the street at full speed. As a quick little side note, the bat cycle is so much fun to ride around with. I wish it had a boost button, and I also wish that it was able to destroy more of the environment, but for the most part, drifting through the streets of Gotham City in the bat cycle is kick ass. 
class. You heard me already say it before about Robin, and I'll say it again. The staff is so damn cool. It really covers some terrain, hitting multiple enemies at once if they're in close proximity from one another. The teleport isn't very fun, though. Definitely needed a rework to increase the speed at which you move when you're trying to teleport. His staff spin move also is amazing. And if you're looking to play a bit more stealthy in Gotham Knights, if you want to see all the stealth that this game has to offer, Robin is definitely the way to go. This is your character. And Red Hood is simply amazing. Definitely ended up being the most fun character for me to play. Even though I don't like that mystical leap, the ranged attacks are addicting. He's also pretty ruthless with some of his takedowns, both in regular combat and in stealth. I wish they didn't make Jason non-lethal, but WB Montreal found a happy medium because he's pretty much as close to lethal as you can get without actually killing people. I find it interesting too because Red Hood has the combo system specifically with his ranged attacks. So yes, there's melee combat and there's even a skill tree dedicated to the brawler aspect of the character, but you realize that Red Hood being a gunslinger is the most important aspect of the character, so you want to make sure that the guns, the ranged attacks, all that stuff feels good and it feels right. And in this game, they did a great job with that. That Mystical Leap, though, still not working, okay? It's just not working for me, not at all. I also really enjoy the way that the knights bounce off one another throughout the story. Again, the voice acting can sometimes be shoddy, but for the most part, it's very solid. And there are some genuinely fantastic moments with standout performances from Christopher Sean's Nightwing and Stephen O. Young's Red Hood. That said though, Sloan Morgan Siegel's Robin has two moments in the game that nearly had me in tears. There's great emotions coming from that character, especially considering that Robin was the closest to Batman from when he had died. I enjoyed America Young's more lighthearted take on Batgirl as well. You can tell that she was having a lot of fun with this role and the character is very wholesome. Although Barbara's smarts from her time as Oracle shine through and she helps carry the investigation forward. And hey, while we're on the topic, let's talk about Gotham Knight's strongest component, the story. Right from the opening minutes of the game, you are locked in for a thrill ride full of moments that'll make you laugh, make you cry, or get you incredibly hyped. Seeing the Court of Owls and being able to face off against them in a game was something I waited years for and WB Montreal delivered. As a fan of the New 52 run, I think we got a faithful adaptation with some fresh new ideas on what makes the Court of Owls such a menacing threat to Gotham City. The way they lurk in the shadows, the way this game makes you explore Gotham's underbelly, it's true fantastic. There's plenty of twists and turns along the way and a few genuinely surprising moments. Do your best to avoid spoilers because there's a lot going on in this game that you'll enjoy going into without prior knowledge. The side content is also really solid, most especially the Clayface stuff. Dare I say, this Clayface adaptation was done even better than the last time we saw him pop up in a Batman game. It's rather heartbreaking, but also has some killer set pieces, which makes sense for our former actor, Basil Carlo. I think the Harley Quinn side quest is okay. Carrie Walgreen though, she does a great job with the character and we finally return to a scarier side of Harley. She gets to stretch her villainous wings in this game, but also still has all her Harley-isms. Then there's the Mr. Freeze quest, which we've seen quite a bit of from two years ago now, also featuring some great set pieces with a sweet boss battle. I think the story related content in this game, both in the main and side missions is very solid. And believe me, there's a decent amount of Batman's rogues gallery in this game all of which are fresh, unique takes that you've never seen before. I was quite surprised and pretty happy with it, in all honesty. I don't think any of the boss battles come close to the truly spectacular fights we had in the previous Batman games, but there's something nostalgic about a classic beat-em-up boss fight where you have to learn the attack patterns in order to take them down. The side missions especially have things spicing up throughout the fight, so it's never the exact same thing the whole way through. Now though, okay, buckle up. We need to address some elephants in the room, okay? After this whole 60 FPS debacle, I was going into the game on my PS5 hoping for at least a fully smooth 30 FPS throughout the entirety of the game. And while I don't believe I have the day one patch when I was playing this game for review, so all of what I'm about to say could change, I'm a little disappointed to report that I ran into a couple of frame drops below 30 FPS. As I mentioned at the top of the video, WB Games also provided me a copy of the game on PC and I was able to try it out there and I have a 3070 in my rig and I wanted the game to run consistently at 60 FPS and when it does, it's so nice, it looks amazing. But I tinkered with the settings as much as I possibly could. Even 
even again with that 3070 in my rig and running it at just 1080p, I couldn't get the game to stay at 60 FPS. I noticed that both on consoles and of course as well on PC, when you're riding around in the bat cycle and you're banking corners quick enough, or if you're utilizing the different knights traversal options, it starts to throttle the game. Clearly there is a pace or a speed in which WB Montreal suspected that most players would be moving at. And to be honest, there are probably a lot of people out there that will be moving at that pace. But I like to go as fast as possible with these characters and utilize everything at their disposal and especially when I'm on the bat cycle, I like drifting around every corner I come across. And I was running into issues fairly regularly. Not 99% of the time. I think it's enough though to be very noticeable. More so though than the frame dropping, another issue that I was running into quite a bit when I was playing Gotham Knights is that I noticed a lot of texture pop-ins cars appearing out of thin air, civilians vanishing, buildings popping in, and then even sometimes not seeing a building in full detail until I get close enough. Clearly, Gotham Knights is in desperate need of some polishing. It's not completely broken, and it isn't like unplayable. It's not constantly happening to the point where your eyes are being assaulted, but it's noticeable. The performance also struggles quite a bit when you're playing co-op. Again, all this can change in a day or two, but I was trying to play co-op with my good friend Uncaged Games, and it was starting to dampen the fun element of the game for me. When you're in certain interior locations and you're not really worried about having an entire open world to load and the game is running relatively smoothly, yeah, the co-op's quite a bit of fun. Teaming up with your buddies, facing off against waves of enemies, doing team takedowns, all those things work really well, except it just doesn't perform at 100% all the time. For anyone wondering why the last gen versions of this game were canceled, well, after playing this game for several hours on the PS5, I think I can safely say that Gotham Knights probably should have been a PS5 slash Series X exclusive from the get-go. I really wonder what position this game would be in if they hadn't even worried about a PS4 or an Xbox One version at all. I hope that with the day one patch and a few other patches that are likely to come in the future, that this game will be running at 100% or at least 100% per what the devs want. Because when Gotham Knights is at its best, it's a gorgeous looking game. There are lots of puddles in this grimy looking Gotham where it's almost always raining and all of this really complements the ray tracing. I cannot stress enough how you guys have to drop the mobile game meme. I would say it's getting old, but the meme has withered away from its old age at this point. It's a good looking game. Is it the most massive leap in graphic fidelity? I wouldn't say so. Is it anywhere near a mobile game or heck a PS3 slash Xbox 360 game like some people have said? What are you smoking? I mean, photo mode is also fantastic. I've had an absurd amount of fun with it. The neon signs gleaming off of Gotham skyscrapers make for some jaw-dropping backdrops for what will no doubt be your brand new desktop wallpapers, especially with all the skins you're able to equip for each night, which sadly brings me to another one of my negatives. And that's a combination of the crafting system, the gear, and of course, the game's UI. You know me. One of the things I was most looking forward to in Gotham Knights was getting to customize my characters. And and don't get me wrong, when you actually unlock new suits and colorways, it's pretty neat. The downside is that it is incredibly confusing and there isn't really a straightforward explanation as to how to unlock every suit style or even the specific transmogs. You see, I finally learned it now. Transmogs aren't customizable at all. And this game being an RPG after all, you're gonna want to be using your best gear, especially when you're progressing through the story. Not to mention the whole system with mods for your gear, crafting gear, the stats for them, it all just becomes a jumbled mess for me. I really would have loved an option to create a transmog of my own instead of being forced to use the ones that are created for the game. It's probably too late now, but oh boy, this UI in general just needs a rework. None of it is working for me. It feels very uninspired and it adds to my confusion with the gear system. Even now, I still can't tell you definitively how to unlock certain suits or colorways in the game. And I commend any of the folks out there who are gonna be creating guides on exactly that. I think all in all, Gotham Knights has great things going for it. An engrossing narrative, easy to learn, hard to master combat, a variety of enemies to face off against and some decently fun traversal. But clearly it's another game that required just a little more time 
time to polish. I don't think this ended up being an Avengers level threat and there's certainly no comparison between this game and that one at all, literally not even close. But it was already disappointing not to have 60 FPS on console. To be dropping below 30 is pretty unacceptable. I'm still hopeful that it'll only need some minor tweaking to perform the way that it was intended and with the four player co-op mode on the way, clearly the devs have some post-launch plans ready to go. I know that after having met them, that these developers have a passion for these characters and this world that they're creating. So I can only hope that this game continues to improve over time, or at least it doesn't take that long for it to run at that constant 30 on console. In a month from now, my score could be higher, but as of right now, I'm giving Gotham Knights a 7 out of 10. And well, there you have it. I have some mixed opinions. I'll be completely honest with you. There's some things that I really like about this game, some things that I genuinely love about this game, but there's also some things that I think aren't very good and some things that are major glaring issues for the game that I hope get fixed sooner rather than later. So that's my thoughts overall, my review for Gotham Knights. And now I kick it to you guys. If you're watching this after the game is released, if you got your hands on it yourself, let me know what you thought about the game in the comments section below. And of course, if you enjoyed my review, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. It would show your support and I really appreciate it. I've been Caboose and I'll see you guys later.